I often find myself looking for a movie to watch, but there's just too many damn options. Well, I think I found one that you're going to like. So we're diving into a whole story where we've got dead bodies that aren't dead, pictures who can't agree on anything, and drugged up kids running around New York City in their underwear. Seriously, it's like The Hangover and a buddy cop movie had a baby. Welcome to Specialist Cinema, I'm Chandler, and my goal here is to share videos that I like or don't with you. Think of me as you will a personal Wikipedia of sorts. If you have a movie to recommend, I'd love to hear about them in the comments below. If you enjoy this type of video, consider subscribing. And let's talk about the wonderful movie that I have for you today. So Margaret, the Manhattan District Attorney, who you'd think has her life together, meets a guy at a bar. Next thing you know, he's dead in her hotel room. Talk about a bad Tinder date, right? He panics, obviously, and calls a fixer because I guess calling room service wasn't an option. Yeah, how did you get this number? He said you'd ask that. In walks our professional, a fixer. He's cool, calm, collected. You know, the type of guy who probably irons his shirts and never spills coffee. Do that quite a bit. Is there anyone that would be concerned if they haven't heard from you yet? But then, just as he's about to clean up the mess, Boom, there's another fixer that shows up, sent by the hotel's owner. <clears throat> the hotel's owner, who apparently has been watching the entire thing on hidden cameras, and it really just gets me thinking of where else did they put those cameras? Bitch. <laughs> the fixers don't want to team up because let's face it, I don't even like asking for directions, let alone making multiple trips with groceries. But Margaret pulls out the, you gave your word, and that's a measure of a man line. Well, I hardly think you're in a position to be negotiating anything. And now they're basically in a four screw project. You know, the kind where no one really wants to be there, but hey, at least they're equally miserable. So the fixers dig through the dead guy's bag and find a stash of drugs. Not just any drugs, enough to make Pablo Escobar blush. Pam tells them to return the drugs to their owners. Oh yeah, no big deal. Just casually walk up to some dangerous Albanian mafia types like you're delivering pizza. Totally normal activities. But before they can get the drugs back, they realize, plot twist, the dead guy isn't actually dead. Shit. Shit. Fuck. Nope, he's high as a kite, running through the city in his underwear, like it's the amazing race. They finally catch him, but it's like trying to catch your dog after it spots a squirrel. Chaos, pure chaos, I'm telling you. I call her back, she never got, she's bolting. So they take the kid to a club to get the pager, because apparently we're in the 90s again, and they get caught up in a wedding dance. Imagine two grumpy fixers doing the colo at a Croatian wedding. That's a sight that could probably cure world peace, and it was absolutely hilarious watching it. I was invested in these guys and was curious about what would happen if they were to sing together. Oh my god, I thought we were dead. Oh my god, thank you, thank you. After all the running around, the fixers hit a diner to grab breakfast, because nothing says a good day's work doesn't end in coffee and pancakes, right? They're sitting there bonding over their bad backs, reading glasses, and guns, and it was a nice time. It was a cool moment that wrapped the entire movie together. Have you personally ever seen two dudes who should be enemies, but deep down they're basically besties? That's them. Then, of course, they figure out that they've been set up the entire time. The night's events were one big game, and now their hitmen are waiting outside the diner for them. It's like, oh great, now we've got hitmen to deal with, and they haven't even finished their pancakes and toast. But before they go full John Wick mode, they make a pact. If they make it out alive, they'll exchange names. Because what better time is it to become friends than during a life or death situation? So yeah, the movie's got it all. Drugs, dead not dead bodies, awkward wedding dances, and more tension than my last family's reunion. But what really sells it is the characters. You start out thinking that they're stereotypical tough guy fixers, but by the end, you realize that they're just two dudes trying to survive the night bad backs and all. So if you're in the mood for a wild, unpredictable ride with some unexpected heart, this one's for you. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. 
and I'll keep bringing you fun movies. Catch you in the next movie. In fact, I think you'd like this one.